good evening everyone uh, welcome to this uh, guest speaker session on design thinking hosted by the members of Kishavaram house at iit metras uh, this session is a part of aranya 2.2 the best of the house it is my great pleasure to welcome you to today's session featuring a distinguished speaker mr sukrat dam mr sukrat brings a wealth of experience in design thinking academia hospitality startups and marketing he currently serves as a course instructor for the BDM and design thinking courses in the BS degree program and NPTEL at IIT Madras. Mr. Sukrat is not only a seasoned professional, but also someone who finds joy in the finer aspects of life, including the art of marketing and well-crafted product designs. Beyond his impressive professional background, Mr. Sukrat is a, free, is a fervent advocate for cultivating empathy in society. His passion for this noble cause is bound to inspire each of us to reflect on the impact of design thinking in fostering understanding and connection. Today, we have the privilege of diving into the world of design thinking with Mr. Sukrat as he shares his insights and experiences. So without further ado, let's warmly welcome him and embark on this journey of innovation. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Aditya. You spoke very highly of me, inspired a lot from what I've written of, about myself on LinkedIn. So I, I uh, duly acknowledge that. OK, uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, and I hope the next half an hour or one hour would be fun for you. Uh, as I said before, also, please contribute. I will be pausing at a lot of places and expecting you to fill in to either write the comments or unmute your mic. OK and uh, take it light it's okay it's it's a very chill thing that we're going to study about okay so yeah, and, uh, uh, just uh, just uh, one more thing before we start uh, for the participants guys uh, if you have any doubts uh, make sure to post them in the chat or the q and a tab that uh, i'm enabling now so if you have questions make sure to post them there and uh, yeah we'll uh, try to answer most of them and uh, all of them at the end of the session so yeah thank you okay uh, cool. So I'm starting my uh, presentation now. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about design thinking and how awesome it is. So before we start, and also uh, just a, a small note before I start, I cannot actively keep looking at the meet uh, window. So if there is anything pressing, just one of you please unmute and I'll pause and have a look there. Okay. Uh, so design thinking, we're going to talk about. I've been dealing with design thinking for the past two and a half years now, plus subconsciously, we all have been experiencing design thinking throughout our life because pretty much all products that we use have a bit of, you know, a hint of design thinking in them. That is why it is somewhat solving our problem. Uh, I've given you a hint uh, now amongst the 30, 40 people who have joined uh, without Googling, without cheating. Could, do you, anybody, does anybody want to define what design thinking is or just an idea of what exactly it can be? Anybody without cheating, just an idea. Do you think design? How do you think design? Uh, sir, I guess design will help you to uh, experience and appease more of the audience. Okay. Like how it looks to you, how it eye catch you. Okay. Anybody else? Thanks, Jasmeet. How you can like present uh, the things like uh, PPTs and all uh, appealing to the audience. Okay. Anybody else? So, um, okay. If nobody else is taking up, I'll just go ahead and try and uh, somebody wrote understanding your target audience. Good need. Yes. Thank that is one part of design thinking. And as you guys said that, uh, you know, how things should look better and how we can present them better. Uh, the aesthetical aspect of it is something that we do not lean too much into in design thinking, but it's part of uh, the first word that is design. So design in itself is not contributing completely to the aesthetics bit of it, but how a thing is made, how a thing is supposed to function as a product or as a service. Right now, um, yeah, what Kamakshi said, identifying a problem and solving it through design. Now, not specifically design is something that design is not a solution, but it is an approach. So giving you a context of what design thinking is, now, design thinking is the way designers work. OK, so uh, it has the school of design thinking. The thought of design thinking has been derived from 
uh, years and years of uh, designers working as on on problems on specific products on specific services and uh, you know academicians specifically ido and organization went ahead and really broke it down made it official stanford gave it more uh, you know uh, theory and literature added to it uh, and eventually the the subject evolved and now we uh, generally accept design thinking as a whole different subject altogether so what exactly is design thinking we, i'll show you a, a, a definition of it maybe uh, you know it will help you understand so this is a definition okay so this is the core of its definition the most complicated version it can be i'll read it out for you design thinking at its core is an iterative and non linear cognitive process one that encapsulates a series of interconnected complex stages aimed at addressing and solving multifaceted problems through a human centric lens it's an amalgamation of empathetic understanding creative ideation and rational problem solving a lot of you who understand english very nicely would have understood what design thinking is but in the simplest words it's not put in in, in the simplest words it's a very complicated uh you know sort of a uh, definition what we have on screen right now so uh, i i have a reference of uh, a three idiots reference here where once where you know they're talking about the zip thing being a machine or not and uh, followed by the book example so let's let's take it from that lens and you know to try to simplify the process so design thinking generally would be you have a problem or you have a person okay you have a specific person or an organization and um, for very uh, for various reasons they are suffering through a specific problem okay we don't know what the problem is but as design thinkers or as designers what we're supposed to do is we have to approach that problem as a user uh, or make them your customer understand them so there are various stages of design thinking the first is understanding them or the empathy phase so in empathy phase what we're trying to do is as i can uh, point it out here also just one second so yeah uh, which uh, aims at uh, amalgamation of uh, sorry it's an amalgamation of empathetic understanding now what exactly is empathetic understanding uh, what can you understand by the word empathy uh, anybody in the crowd empathy what what do you mean by empathy any takers on that you can write it down also being able to understand uh, what someone else is going through perfect anything else some find feelings on someone's pov very good wearing else's shoes wearing someone else's shoes uh tum kya tutul putul i don't know emotions <laughs> from other perspectives fair enough fair enough so okay imagine this that um you have a stomach ache okay and you are grumbling on the ground because you have a terrible stomach ache maybe it's gas maybe some maybe somebody punched you maybe had maybe you had something off uh, you know it can be constipation of sorts something uh, and you go to a doctor and you say uh, sir i'm in a lot of pain and the doctor instead of understanding what sort of a pain it is uh, he just gives you a, a, you know a, a normal pain reliever now what the doctor did not do is understand where the problem lied what the problem was where you are exactly suffering whereas what a good doctor would do uh, he'll sit you down he'll touch you in like you know the pain points of your stomach ask what exactly is up have you eaten anything odd recently if there is anything wrong so in this in in doctoral terms in medical terms what he's doing is that he is uh, diagnosing what the problem is and when we try to diagnose of the problem of somebody else in a non medical uh, zone and really understand what exactly their problem is what their situation is where they come from things like that is what is called empathy now if we show empathy to somebody meaning uh, we are being open to the way they are feeling we are opening our minds and heads to a zone where we are actually understanding what the other person is going through so all these points uh, wearing somebody else's shoe feeling some or feel, feeling on someone's pov all of them correct this is a basic crux of what empathy is now next thing is creative ideation and rational problem solving 
now we know that there is a problem okay but what exactly are we going to do about it so uh, let's go back to that example of you having a summer cake right so now a good you go to a better doctor he touches on your uh, stomach and you he realizes that you have gastritis gastritis or you have gas in your stomach right so he'll probably give you a medicine which will relieve gas which will also not dehydrate you things like that so there are specific medicines that he will give for a specific problem but in a general broader aspect not everybody is suffering from just a stomach ache right so what they're going to do is they're going to look into what exactly uh, we're going to look into what exactly their problem is and what sort of solutions can we come up with so it's not going to be limited to a specific uh, you know a specific solution that we're going to look into we are going to ideate a lot we're going to brainstorm a lot we're going to maybe list down a hundred ideas and then sift out the good ones the practical ones the you know the ones that are viable enough for us to do so that is what exactly uh, design thinking uh, uh, sorry create solution or ideation in uh, design thinking is and once we have a final product or once we have a final solution then we have to run it again through the customers to understand how we have made the product to gain their feedback to understand what exactly they have done or what exactly we have done right and what not uh, if they don't like it then we go back we make another solution we make another iteration we make another change and this is like a non iterative uh, non linear process an iterative non linear process of just us understanding what the problem is us trying to solve the problem us giving us the solutions and us getting the feedback on that solution now complicated i think i complicated this my explanation way more than what is on the slide okay so uh, just a quick show of hands i need to understand uh, how many people have seen this movie like uh, like stars or not just you know raise your hands so there is one, two, three, four. There's a thumbs up. Fifteen, six. Wow, there's like a lot of raised hands. Twenty something raised hands. So we get the fact that you watched Tare Zameen Par. Okay. Now, in my experience, Tare Zameen Par as a movie best describes what the design thinking phase is going to be, or or how it has been applied. Okay. Now. Um, let's let's you know go ahead with that anybody uh, giving you know anybody any thoughts or questions so far uh, or you know any guesses on what tarism in par did as a design thinking thing uh, how that concept was applied all throughout the movie any takers so far before i you know move on to the next slide if not i can go ahead it's okay Empathizing with dyslexic child. Okay, perfect. So, Brad, didn't you have like another uh, class to go to? <laughs> He's bunking here. Okay. Uh, so, Peter was nurturing the unique talent. Okay. Okay. So, no. What I uh, what I expect you to understand is that okay. Imagine the Shil Safari or Ishaan Avasti as uh, in in Tarzan Zameen Par as the customer here and. Um, uh the spiky guy uh, amir khan being the uh, you know the design design thinker the actual person who's uh, you know uh, helping him out so that he is the person who is going to help and apply design thinking on the shield safari as a customer okay i have a couple of comments here identifying uh pedagogical this is better identify and trust ignoring what is important no we don't ignore what is important okay so um, le let's let's move ahead with that so here we and let's let let's go below, let's go uh, stage by stage on what is exactly happening here so when the movie starts we all see that you know that the shield safari is this super uh, you know imaginative guy but is struggling a lot okay he daydreams he uh, is not excelling in the uh, he's not excelling in the school his parents are not happy with him he uh, is in a constant competition against his own brother uh, the people in his street don't treat him nicely he doesn't have any friends because he's a little weird so all of that is is an amalgamation of all the problems that this guy had okay and in this uh, gif also we see that he's just you know he's getting late for school and he's just 
you know avoiding breakfast and just thinking he's in his own world not that it's wrong to be in his own world but it is something that is not acceptable by the mother it is something that is not acceptable by the school okay so as a character or as a user we understand that this guy has this many problems okay so things lead one to another something 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 happens the parents get super pissed and eventually he goes to a boarding school now when he goes to the boarding school we realize that there is amir khan waiting for him and he looks into that boy as you know as a problem case and a lot of teachers raised a lot of problems against that child but as an empathetic uh, teacher or as a empathetic human he came ahead and he started looking into ishan's problems as a you know as something that he wants to solve uh, or something you know that he could understand and probably help with so this is where the anal analysis bit comes in where a design thinker is sitting down with its client or looking at the client from a distance from uh, what we call a uh, lizard on the wall approach okay you you look at the client or you look at the customer or you look at the user what exactly is their problems how is their day going what is this uh, you know user interested in what is good for him what is not going good for him and just sit down and write those things down or maybe you know have a note for it that this is something that the student is you know having troubles in but there is an alternate way to solve that problem so first in empathize and analysis the empathize and analyze stage this is something that we have to do we have to understand what the problem is and then list down the problems and probably phrase it in a way that this is the problem this is how th i mean we should solve this so there are different approaches to it so to drill down problems we have a multi problem multi wire approach uh, let let's apply that to ishan's case okay um, he doesn't do good in academics why doesn't he do good in academics because he doesn't understand anything that is being said why doesn't he understand anything that is being said or written because the words are all jumbled up in his head why so this is like a step wise why 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 we keep on asking why to a problem to drill down to a problem or to drill, to drill down to one statement which will define us our problem so if we eliminate his dyslexia altogether okay if we eliminate the fact that he is not okay with words maybe we'll have a solution and that is exactly something that amir khan does in this uh, movie is that if he's having trouble with words or understanding or expressing words in a written format maybe there is another way for him to let his creativity out okay so uh, in one of the very nice songs hey, 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 that song they at the end of the uh, thing they talk about doing something okay doing something creative and innovative now what is amir khan doing in that aspect is that uh, he's giving a space or he's enabling the space enabling the space for uh, ishan avasti and the other students also to be a little creative in a non textual format you know away from the books they go to a lake they make something he makes an entire functional boat which is kind of a big deal right and uh, th there there are ways in which we understand that okay another approach when taken with ishan or with a specific student or anybody who is suffering from dyslexia can probably bring out of the better version of them okay so this is something that hit me or you know uh, struck well with me in this movie that you know there is always another solution there is always another approach to any sort of a problem it's just upon the design thinker or you as you know somebody who's trying to help somebody to really think and innovate and you know be calm enough to implement it to test it out with the uh, user and see whether they are responding well or uh, well well to it or not so uh, in the solve phase uh, what we see or or uh, another another side point that i want to put here is that when you google uh, design thinking uh, you know you will find five or six stages to it so what we have as e a s t that is east uh, that is our uh, you know acronym that i've learned from my professor professor bala uh, they have a different uh, set of uh, stages so there is empathize analyze Uh, iterate prototype and test so what we have done is we have merged iterate and prototype into solve so in iteration phase we are thinking of all sorts of solutions that you know we can come up with uh, we are looking at the conflict that can possibly be 
in a given solution whether it is helping out the customer in his in his own problem or not things like that so here in this movie coming back to this movie what they do is that they um, th that uh, amir khan lets them be free lets them be creative and he sees that there is a very good response from ishan as a student or as a customer because he gets down to the lake he makes that entire boat by himself and you know things th good things happen good things follow now to implement this okay now the test phase that is coming is uh, where we where, we, where we are going to try and implement or whatever prototype we've made we are going to run it through the uh, end user now end user being ishan in this case and what is the thing that we are going to do so our suggested solution was to let him be creative how are we going to implement it let's have a painting competition when he paints he excels he has the cover on you know he he makes a painting so good that it goes on the school magazine that year things like that so this is what happens when you know you create a good solution and test it with your user and when the when the user resonates with it you know it's it's a success of your product so that is something that uh, encapsulates the entire stages of design thinking anybody so far any question i will look into the chat also yeah there is a question in the q and a uh, so would you like it like to take it now or uh, so sure sure yeah go ahead let, let me look so yeah yeah so, uh, ati ati wants to ask uh, that uh, he wants to know where to start designing uh, i know that designing is completely different than editing but where should one start name some user and beginner friendly software that might let us go into it okay sure so arthi uh, let me elaborate on like, i want to know your question in a little more detail uh, so when you say designing what is it that you're designing i want to know because if you're making maybe a software okay then there are other there are various uh, ui softwares that you know you can work upon if you're making an app then there are different ux ui ux prototypes that you can make compatible to the phone compatible to the laptop things like that or if you want to prototype you can prototype with a simple pen and paper you can use cardboard you can use thermocol tape ropes anything that you want so it really depends on what exactly is the product that you are making if it's a service if it is a hardware if it is an app things like that uh, virendra jain we will get to me uh, you can search my name sukrat dang on linkedin or you can uh, use my correct spelling this is the correct spelling at study.itm.ac.in you can mail me there virendra uh, so uh, arthi coming back on your question so you have um, if you're trying to solve a problem and you have a specific solution in your mind uh, where to start is exactly uh, dependent on what your what your product is so say for example i uh, had a case in which we were trying to um, help out the customers who were driving on a scooter okay now i as a person also drive on the i have a scooter i have a yamaha fasino uh, okay and i was new to chennai and when i was in the campus and one thing that i had a constant problem with was to constantly look for look at my phone on google maps while driving okay so i had this severe issue that you know every time i had to take it out it was inconvenient to have a bulky phone with like everything attached to it so it's not it's not convenient for me to hold it and you know use it uh, 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 very readily on the on the road so i acted as a customer i also acted as somebody you know who contributes towards the solution and in the end we came up with a bell size watch not a smart watch but like uh, just a thing that can be put on the handle or the mirror of the thing and it gives a small notification for uh, the turns that need to be made so to start off the prototype that we made was just a simple presentation okay we made a circle and then in, inside we inserted or uh, inserted an api for google maps then we connected it to our phones that was something that we did okay but in the end right now at the stage that it is uh, at after a lot of iterations that i think there are like 10 15 rounds of iterations that we've done now it is something that is a mountable device on a scooty and uh, you know you can just 
put in your location from your phone and it will reflect on the scooters uh, attached uh, thing and it will show you the exact directions when you want to turn if you don't have your phones it's fine because it will show you that exactly in 50 meters you have to turn sometimes what happens with google maps is uh, that i have my earphones on to tell me with the thing uh, you know to turn left in 500 meters but i can't keep a track on the speedometer how many times like you know what time it hits 500 meters so i have to turn it's a uh, slightly impractical so to uh, tackle all of those things we made that mountable thing uh, yeah uh, so yeah those things uh, is, uh, that is something that we did as uh, as as a solution to so to start with start absolutely simple start absolutely basic that's never an issue uh, aditya if there are questions following this let me know okay thank you ati yes sir sure okay now these are the four stages of uh, uh, design thinking the way i approach it and the way a couple of other people approach it that is empathize analyze solve and test now for the funnest part is the part where we take the feedback from people okay it can, I, I call it fun because that shows where exactly your product where exactly the entire effort that you've been putting for days months weeks has landed you okay so in this case the feedback was a one okay so this is something that uh, we wanted uh, i mean the the you know the thing showed uh, the movie showed that he was happy with the end product they had hugs and stuff so uh, this was a successful uh, implementation of design thinking as a as a concept on a user from another person altogether now there are organizations which apply design thinking to a lot of things okay so we're going to talk about them but so far I'm going to move on to my next slide. Uh, if there are questions at this point, let me know. If not, I'm going to go ahead. Okay. Anyone? All right. No questions. So <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to do is apply design thinking. Okay. So we have uh, any, any guesses on who this person on screen is right now? Any guesses? Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Okay. Any song that you might like of him? Shape of You. Any better song? <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Perfect. So, uh, Perfect is a very good song. A Team is a very good song. Uh, various different songs. Okay. I don't like Shape of You for some reason. But yeah, good, good uh, identification of the thing. So what we're going to do in this session is we're going to take Ed Sheeran as a user, okay, as the first user, and we're going to drill down what he is as a person, okay. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to make a user persona, and for Ed Sheeran is just an example. Uh, while approaching design thinking, the first thing and the primary thing that you have to take care of is the end user, okay. If the end user, you really, you know, drill down and understand who he is, what he does, what what's good with him, what's wrong with him, what are his problems, you will be able to uh, probably do justice to the solution that, you know, you're going to propose. And before we go ahead with that, I am going to send you a link that is, I think it's a Jamboard link. Yeah. So on the Jamboard, this we will jump to at the end of the session. But for your reference, this is a Jamboard. OK, write your problems there. Everybody has access to edit. OK, just write whatever problems you have in your life, not something that is beyond my, uh, uh, because that's uh, that's offensive for me, man. Why will they talk about the shape of me? Uh, OK, so uh, just write your uh, problems, OK? And we will try and see how we're going to approach them, OK? So use that Jamboard. If anybody has any problem accessing that Jamboard, let me know. So now we're going to move on to really knowing who Ed Sheeran is as a person. Okay. So his name here we see is Ed Sheeran. His physical attributes are uh, he is in an age group of 15, uh, 25 to 40, and his height is 173 centimeters. His personality, what does he do? He's a creative uh, person. He's also very introspective. Uh, uh, and he is down to earth, you can talk to him, he's fun, he's friendly, uh, passionate about music and storytelling. We can see that in his work, uh, you know, all the songs that he's written, all the collaborations that he's done, he's come in like a couple of movies also. Uh, there was yesterday the Beatles movie in which he was there. 
so uh, he he you know he's he's been there he's been uh, out and about and uh, he likes a lot of things and uh, he likes privacy he likes his own time there are things to him that he wants to keep to himself things like that uh, what does he like as we can see clearly in the photo he really likes tomato ketchup he really likes cats he really likes music quite apparently because he is a musician he really likes basketball i've seen him you know sit court side on nba games so he really likes basketball and he really likes legos he also has a song called lego house beautiful song much better than shape of you or perfect you can quote me on that uh, so there are you know different things that he likes now let's drill down as a personality trait what exactly would be his you know suggested problems and i uh, i've been told that i have to include the uh, you know the aspect of ai in this so uh, let me just full disclosure i have enlisted his uh, problems a list of problems i told chat gpt to give me a list of problem problems that ed sheeran might have and this is the list of problems that you know came up so maintaining privacy we just discussed here that he values privacy so maintaining that is a big problem managing the hectic schedule he's a world class world renowned artist so of course he has a hectic schedule doesn't really get to you know uh, have have a lot of uh, space for himself uh, creative burnout of course he's ideating constantly he's thinking about something constantly somebody's shape somebody's lyric okay so that that he he is supposed to like he is bound to hit a creative burnout uh, thing balancing career and personal life again things things and something like that uh, staying relevant in a changing industry now everybody is a mumble rapper everybody is doing something else you know there are new people coming up 7 billion people somebody will replace him constant pressure of that okay health and wellness of course when you're dealing with so, so much stress so much you know movement around uh where do you think ours things like that so of course health and wellness also comes into play and the challenges that he has with production whether it is something to do with video production something to do with audio production any any other thing maybe sometimes his clothes are not okay to not presentable enough something like that so he has technical challenges there also uh he has troubles with luggage because he's traveling so much he has his four named guitars he has his pets uh other things his own baggage so there is a trouble with you know carrying around luggage and because he's such an avid fan of ketchup he also has a tattoo here on of of ketchup on his arm uh while dispensing it he has that problem that you know he he spills shit uh, he spills uh, something on the thing now why did we talk about all of this is that th is because this is just a superficial you know view of what ed sheeran might be like okay i haven't seen him in person i haven't talked to him i haven't really understood what his problems are and this so far i mean if if i just you know raise uh, if i go come back to the screen and you have this entire set of problems okay there how many people here are in in the age group of 25 to 40 just a raise of hands quick raise of hands 1 2 3 3 people 4 uh, people okay uh, how many people are maybe 5 8 or 5 9 in height 1 ati stall okay uh, how many people like tomato ketchup cats music lego anybody any any anything just me the 6 feet congrats man uh so there are a lot of things that you know, a lot of people who like tomato ketchup uh, cats music basketball things like that and along with a big no for ketchup oh yeah i'm sorry i had to give a trigger warning this uh, slide contains a lot of ketchup okay so people who absolutely hate or gag about uh, from the sight or the smell of ketchup or the taste of ketchup please look away please log out it's not meant for you okay uh so bro i'm five that's six no anyway so uh yeah there is there is going to be a lot of catch up okay and problems now there are important problems here like maintaining privacy maintaining uh, managing a hectic schedule creative burnout things like that you know all of them super serious super super serious okay problems so what what am i saying from this is that this is a very generic set of problems to understand a problem better we have to actually go to the user or at least talk to the user you know see him not from a bird's eye view but from personal level and i really understand what exactly he is suffering with okay
so uh, that and then is when we can you know try and st start uh, working towards a solution or at least ideating towards a solution because at this point he looks a lot like me i have a lot i have pretty much the same problems 25 to 40 6 uh, 5 feet 8 9 inches all of these problems come down to me also that's a really old photo i've grown fat now but it's fine so uh, this is the only photo i could find with me eating food so anyway the point is that as a customer, you can't really generalize things about him if you're trying to really help him out as a problem. So um, uh, what you need to do is really introspect, really look down on, look into the customer's problems, look into what his, uh, you know, day-to-day -day activities are, where his actual pain points are, what he's doing, whether he's happy or not doing that. What is the entire customer journey of this specific customer? Okay. So going ahead, uh, any any problems so far? Any comments, any problems so far? Prioritize different works, meaning? Uh, sir, I would like to know, like I also face this problem, creative burnout and managing on a hectic schedule. Yeah. So like, yeah. what should we do to uh, like, don't have this problem anymore? Set boundaries. <laughs> uh, but it's getting difficult to set boundaries. Uh, okay, we'll we will discuss with this pro. We'll deal with this problem. Okay, we'll apply like design thinking on your specific schedule or on Thank your you specific so much, problem sir. after this. Okay, uh, so if you guys are liking this session, invite other BS students. Another facility, another session for this specifically. Thank you guys. Everything is difficult. Okay, so uh, and anybody else? Anybody? Any uh, comments? Any questions? Any bit? Anything else? There is there was one question I didn't really get it uh, in the question section. Uh, I don't see the question section anymore. Uh, so uh, Aditya, if there is a question, let me know. Okay. So uh, if there is nothing, yes. we're going to come back to uh, understanding what the user's problem is. So right now we have a whole list of problems. Okay, maintaining privacy, managing a hectic schedule, creative burnout. Just me. There's also having the same problem. Okay, balancing career life problem, important things. Okay, all important things. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of these problems. Okay, and we will probably pick the most important one out there. Okay, like I think uh, it must be relatable to a lot of people. That is ketchup. Okay, so <laughs> there is going to be we're going to talk about what happens with uh, you know with this ketchup problem. Okay. It's super important. I care a lot about it. So let's talk about ketchup. Now, when we think of ketchup, okay, and sorry for everybody who is trying to, you know, not gag right now. Uh, sorry if you don't like ketchup. I really like ketchup. Okay, so uh, you can go ahead and uh, turn off the thing. But uh, we're going to talk about how ketchup uh, used design thinking and, uh, you know, improved upon its own design. So when uh, we talk about ketchup, okay, for in, let's talk let's talk on an international scale. The first brand or the first thing that comes to the first product that comes to our mind is Heinz ketchup, okay. And if we see uh, here, oh, sorry, let me come back. If we see here, he is also using a Heinz bottle, okay. It's a glass bottle that I can see. He has been using a um, oh, this glass bottle of. Uh, Heinz that is right there. So of course he has you know specific problems using it and it's something that we're going to apply design thinking to and something that um, uh, Heinz as a company also applied uh, the uh, design thinking to. So what we saw that the problem that they identified was that there was a problem in squeezing out ketchup in a regulated measured manner okay. So what they did, they saw people struggling. Some they saw people keeping ketchup as you know as an inverted bottle in their fridge. Uh, somebody added water, shook it, took out whatever liquid, weird state, diluted state of ketchup there was because they just could not deal with you know the ketchup dispense of ketchup. And uh, I think this the, the the brand started somewhere in 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 nineteen sorry eight. Some, it's really old brand I think. Uh, and it took them years and years of understanding what exactly the problem with their ketchup bottle was because their consistency is to die for. It's a really good, nice quality of ketchup, but how do we dispense it properly? So 
they iterated they saw people use it they made other prototypes of bottles they put the same consistency catch up they made a lot of changes inside the bottles itself and in the end they finally came up with a product and this is where the designing of the product comes in is that they made this thing this inverted bottle is a plastic bottle which is squeezable it has a cap you unopen you uncap the cap squeeze it close it and it's the end it may make a weird sound but at least your ketchup is not getting splattered your ketchup is not getting wasted okay any questions so far yeah uh, there is one question from a person who calls himself mathematics supernova yeah yeah yeah, I don't uh, know. yeah yeah his question is how can we deal with the situation efficiently when everything is opposite and how can we work with proficiency to achieve the goal okay uh, so um, uh, supernova what we are dealing with right now is something that you call a, a conflict of interest in a situation okay so you want specific a specific some solution but there are a lot of opposing factors to it okay so what we are going to do is we are going to see as to what is the commonality between your solution and what the expected problem solution is what are the uh, you know factors that really affect the stakeholders in the situation and somehow come to a common conclusion or a more you know a minimum viable product or a minimum viable solution that is what we are going to do i understand i'm throwing a lot of terms right now which you might need to read into a little later but uh, this is something that is highly important for you to understand that there is a whole spectrum of you know conflicts that will come when you are trying to make any sort of solution or when you are trying to apply design thinking now in your specific question there are conflicts as of the nature of the problem itself and as you as a end user or a solution maker okay so you have to sit down understand and really drill down what the problem is if you find the root of that problem and have a solution to eliminate the root of the problem itself maybe there you will have your answer or you drill down the problem to a point where you can actually help it okay that is where you will identify that oh okay this is something that i can work with this is something that is not going against my wishes or my capabilities and this is the space that i'm going to operate in and try and solve that problem okay so uh, i understand it's a slightly vague answer but if you have any specific more specific question to ask me please unmute and ask okay sir i have one question about this uh, ketchup problem actually yeah ask chatrapal uh, so so uh, in this uh, solution the company has shifted to uh, like they've removed the glass bottles but yeah. uh, we know that glass bottles help in uh, uh, longevitizing the uh, expiry date and uh, preventing the odor and everything so that not might really. not be a, a problem for restaurants because uh, there their stock gets uh, exhausted very quickly but suppose yeah. we are keeping uh, the bottles in home uh, hmm. would that be a problem so no what uh, so uh, hines when they were solving the problem they had a couple of issues to address one thing was uh, ketchup getting a little destabilized because of the nature of the packing so what they've done is they've used uh food grade plastic which is i think some specific microns i'm not sure of what the micron uh, weightage is uh for this specific bottle and another thing that they were trying to solve is the sustainability issue because it's all plastic now instead of a uh, uh, metal cap and a glass bottle uh, they introduced a 100% recyclable cap also so they, these were the two things that they mostly addressed as far as the homogeneity or the quality of uh, the ketchup going bad was concerned i think there are stabilizer doing that work so within uh, the ketchup itself there are preservatives there are other things that will keep the consistency and the quality of the ketchup uh, i think that is a problem that they addressed way quickly way, way early in the process and that is where all the stabilizers all the preservatives came into place so i don't think it's a glass bottle problem specifically Uh, although uh, with this with the glass bottle still the pouring thing is still a problem so that uh, is something that they want to tackle yeah. by the way i think like uh, replacing glass with plastic may help them to recover from uh, breakage and all breakage yeah uh, exactly so when i was running the restaurant uh, when they poured a ketchup they used to slam it against the table okay and sometimes the glass would break or you know something breakage definitely is a thing so that is also something that you know they tried to uh, improve on Uh, as against uh, in in a more in a moderate okay
so uh, we have we have less time and i have a lot of content so i'll go ahead uh, so anybody else, so just just one more minute we're going to spend on this slide similar to this solution okay anybody else who can come up with more examples of such products or such uh, you know designs or products that have been uh, either changed or introduced in the world to solve a specific problem anybody any example where you think design thinking has been applied as a concept as uh, something that you know is is uh, it was vital to be uh, applied any example if not no example then we can move on it's fine yes no there is come up with a packet sauce what come up with the packet so packet sauce our design is a packet sauce like uh, uh, there is a packet of a sauce which can be folded and squeezed into uh, the, the pitchku pitchku pouch the small one maggi pitchku yes like that there is a big one also like uh, there is a patanjali one that big one ones okay the 1.1 liter big one Uh, yes, sir. got it, got it, got it. So yeah, equally nice, very nice. I, I guess like this, sir. Uh, you are talking about this is ha. This is the Viva yes, Vionis. Yes, 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 yes. Correct. Yes, so yes, Kisan yes. has this one, one point one liter or five hundred ml. You pour it, you squeeze it, but then again, you can't see the ketchup inside it because it's a metal sheet outside. You don't know yes. what exact how much ketchup is left or how much you need to squeeze it. So uh, how Heinz is doing it is that they have a transparent bottle, so you can see how much dilution you need to do. Okay. so uh, okay moving ahead you did not really give me another product you we stuck on ketchup but that's fine so uh, this is these are some things that we are uh, you know dealing uh, with sir actually i think you made everyone here a ketchup fanatic uh, <laughs> maybe i am so sorry if i changed your taste buds but uh, yeah so let's talk about what's on the slide right now so empathy we talked about about the ketchup thing uh somebody in the comments wrote iphone so iphone will i'll get to it first let me touch the analyze phase so uh, if we go back to the uh, edge run slide so he had a lot of problem traveling with his entire luggage right because the luggage is heavy and if somebody is old enough as me they would remember uh, uh, you know suitcases without a tire so somebody somewhere in the world who was making uh, suitcases realized that this is a problem that needs to be solved they analyzed the problem looked into you know how it can be you know minimized that the carrying of weight or the burden of weight can be minimized and they introduced wheels under a suitcase now we have a whole bunch of mokoboras and vips and other things coming in with this so that is where another solution in the form of tires came in wheel as itself is a big solution to a lot of problems in the human history specifically in luggage Uh, this strolling suitcase was another uh, thing that they analyzed on drill down on the pain points and came up with a product uh, the conflict that they uh, discovered in this was thing is heavy thing has to be lifted but thing has to be you know taken from one place to the other also and with less effort how does they how do they amalgamate all of it put tires under the uh, suitcase solve uh, now this is one thing that i would uh, you know is is one of my favorite companies one of the favorite products that they made uh, is an iphone i understand there are a lot of debates between an, an android and an iphone how it is better or something something there there is a whole debate of that i myself am an android user so it's fine uh, but the thing is that they came up with a product which we did not even know we required so uh, big w sir okay so uh, what i'm trying to say with that is that uh, there is a quote by henry ford okay henry ford is the person who made who introduced the ford cars into the world so uh, he wrote that uh, i mean if if uh, if you ask people what they want to travel faster they'd say more horses or stronger horses right but what they don't really require is that they need an automobile or a, 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 a car that is something that they need so you really have to understand what the problem is of the user because they themselves won't come up with solutions or innovation what you need to do is you give them solutions and make them understand that this is something that was missing from your life okay so uh, that is where a smartphone came into place so far we had everything we knew everything things were okay without uh, you know 
without a smartphone things were okay on a landline things were okay in letters and you know shipping was okay we go, we went to blockbuster we went to cinema halls but then came a smartphone which eliminated pretty much all of the things so uh, hence a product so good that it solves multiple of problems we also call it a curbstone solution but basically thinking of solutions or to a problems that users themselves don't realize they have so how do you do that you empathize with them you really look at what the situation of that user there is and then come up with a possible solution i know some people did it before iphone but for as a bigger brand and as a bigger uh, recognized product i've put the photo there okay then last thing we move on to is the test phase uh, what what india has done especially during lockdown is invent or introduce the concept of upi okay things were bad things were super bad people had to you know stand in lines because of demonetization they had to uh, look into atms they went into atms and they saw no money there no no cash there uh, it was chaotic like at least the first month of uh, you, uh, demonetization it was absolute chaos but they somebody came up with a solution that hey there are qr codes everybody has smartphones why not digitize the payments right and initially in the first few days or first few months of upi being introduced people were hesitant against it people uh, you know came up with uh, problems that uh, somebody is faking upi transactions i'm not getting money somebody is putting their own qr code on somebody else's qr code and getting the money uh, all of those problems came up and slowly with iterations with like you know looking at how things can be managed better they introduced better versions of upi and more secure ways of payment and that is how a prototype tested implemented and launched worldwide no at least country wide so that is what a good system can comes up through the test phase of uh, innovation and design thinking any questions any comments so far yeah uh, so karat sir uh, just like to know that like you to know that uh, this session uh, it's uh, you know it's very popular among uh, all the students in the bs community uh, okay not just data science students but even uh, i mean including me the students in the new uh, electronic systems degree have also joined in this uh, session so uh, our pr team has uh, you know posted it uh, in all the groups and everyone was excited to join this and uh, there is a question from uh, one of the electronic system students uh, venkata subhash he yeah. uh, he says that i would like to ask how trade offs are decided and uh, is there any specific procedure to determine what to trade off trade off meaning explain what trade off you mean uh venkata uh, would you like to unmute yourself and uh, go ahead good evening sir uh, good evening sir uh, we i had come across this trade off concept for, from some of our lectures and uh, okay what i know about thread of source so like you know when uh, there are two uh, for example two good features we want to include uh, but only one is possible we would just uh, i mean eliminate one of those i mean hmm. we just ignore one of those okay that is known as a thread of uh, okay so you have two things to pick but you have place for one so what do you ditch yeah okay so um, i think the more i mean ideally in an ideal situation we would want a product who which would incorporate both those things okay uh, both the features but if there is a possibility of including only one then i would suggest to go with something that is of more a better utility although it's a very rare case because once you are developing a product you have the entire freedom to do whatever to it there is no you know specific limitation on a, on an app's weight or you know a, a, um uh, an apps uh, how many mbs or gbs it has to be if you're if you're the developer you have the flexibility of including that if the if the product is something that is going absolutely against the first pro the the you know the other option then is something uh, th then is the situation where you you know probably do a a, a comparative analysis of what is uh, better how it is affecting the app uh, what is the utility it is serving things like that so um, yeah i mean it really depends on case to case i'm not really sure if you can give me an example i'll probably help you with the further solution but uh, this is what i have in my head right now uh, i mean to be more precise that thread off means that when uh, for example we are including one thing 
Mm-hmm. Uh, there will be both the positives and negatives, like you know. Okay, right. You have to ignore those negatives. Uh, those are known as trade-offs. How to ignore those negatives? Uh, exactly. It's not. It's not ideal to ignore negatives. It's ideal to eliminate those negatives because you don't want a negative experience to be felt by your user. So that is something that you might want to look into. Uh, you have to eliminate, uh, you know, whatever the unpleasant experience that the user might have. Now, say for example, uh, uh, let's let's talk about UPI. Okay, uh, I go to a shop or I uh, I take an auto and I promise him that you know I will GPI you. But uh, in the end, what what happens is he takes out his phone and his network services server is down. Okay, and I'm standing there inside, uh, like you know, and uh, in, in a very random location, trying to get cash from somebody, or you know, trying to give get him to give me somebody else's number whose bank is okay, so I can transfer money, all of that shimsham. So that is a you know that is a negative aspect of a problem that you need to uh, really think about and think against. Of they did come up with this, they did come up with such a solution. uh but that was for from from the sender's point of view where uh sender doesn't really need to approach a bank in the first place we'll give you a wallet where you have specific amount of money and you can send it to somebody else without even you know bothering your bank at that specific moment so in case your bank network is down or your server is down you can send money to the other person the solution for which from the other end pers- uh, from the other uh, side hasn't come yet where you know the receiver's bank is down so you can send him money irrespective so that is a problem that has still been you know not been addressed so uh, there's there's a thing of that upi can be used offline now how please tell me no but if the bank server itself is not uh, accepting money then how it, how is it working i'm not sure let me know please write to me i am very less on, i'm very you know short on time uh, so uh, this was about Uh, you know EAST. Uh, any other comment? Any other question? Yeah, uh, there are just uh, two more questions from uh, two people. Uh, the first yeah. one is, peace. Uh, I want to know why the headphone jack are miss are getting missing. Uh, he basically wants to know the he- headphones uh, headphone jack is uh, missing from uh, newer phones and technology. Ah, uh, okay. So headphones themselves came with a lot of problems. uh direct human centric answer to it uh when you put a headphone in your pocket it became jumbled one big problem second big problem was either of the ears went bad because the uh, the wiring went uh, you know a little loose three th- third thing is that the jack itself the 3.5 mm jack uh used gold uh, sorry not gold copper conductors which once which upon inserting and uh, ejecting again and again got a uh, got very uh, Uh, what is that word called? Uh, they they faced a lot of uh, wear out. So the conduction of music or you know electric waves was a big problem in in the longer run. So uh, using earphones or keeping that earphone jack was a big problem in the newer phones. Also including that entire thing or as a concept or as a technology in new phones was not being finan was not financially viable. i as a user miss earphone jacks because it was just you know too easy no bluetooth no nothing just plug it in and use it but every 3 4 months i had that issue irrespective of how expensive my earphone was that it either the jack went missing or it was doing cut 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 or there was one ear going bad something happening but when once you once you start using you know bluetooth earphones all you need to do is charge them once a week and that's it and maybe charge them for 2 3 hours and and you're good to go for the rest of the week so um that is why probably you know the jack is getting replaced uh, there are still uh, devices which have uh, you know the c- capacity of earphones uh, sorry jacks but they are more advanced uh, in in uh, uh, you know when related to the use of it so there there is that like an amplifier will have it a good guitar will have it some good music mixing thing will have it and they'll have the bigger uh, uh, jack also uh, the one that gets into the amp so uh, so it is it a bad use of design thinking or good it is a really good use of design thinking definitely is uh, thanks adarsh for the ad uh, people use 3 4 years okay i'll 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 look into it adarsh thanks okay uh, moving ahead uh, is the scopes of dt um yeah 
I'll just put everything here in one go. So what else does design thinking come into work with? There is product development. What I've put here, a lot of people might know, might not know. It's a very famous brand called the Dyson Vacuum. Uh, so they realized what exactly was required out of a vacuum. How is it going to help you better? How is it going to uh, you know, uh, perform better as against other cleaning devices? Um, things like that. So it does wet cleaning, it does cl uh, dry cleaning, it does car carpet cleaning, pet cleaning, you know, a million other things within one single device. So it's like a one-stop shop for all cleaning products. Uh, second was the financial services where we talked about people have problems, you know, uh, transacting money. So the UPI bit came in, so many different other apps came in. Uh, there are banking apps which have eliminated the entire point of users going to the bank itself. So if you if you witnessed your uh, grandparents or parents go to uh, a bank every month to get the passbook updated, to get some checkbook done, to get you know some service from the bank, all of that eliminated right on your phone. Okay, it's everything is possible through your phone now. Uh, followed by UI UX. Now everything that we do. Uh, or see on the phone is a product of design thinking and UI UX. Uh, how does it help? There are a million ways that UI UX and design thinking and empathy and user understanding, uh, you know, uh, affect the way we operate on the phone. Uh, if there is a big apply thing on thing on the on the screen, we'll press on that. Or if there is um, you know a specific product that we have to look at or if there is a specific thing on the screen that you need your user to focus more on you change things like that if you want the user to feel good then there is the entire gamification there is the entire approval uh, you know screens that you make where like the payment is done your uh, uh, product is being shipped you will get this product at this point swiggy uh, if you see the um, the outline of Swiggy, when you order from uh, the, the app Swiggy, you will see that the guy has reached the restaurant. He's on this way, coming back. So they have integrated all of that after understanding the anxiousness of the user. Uh, you know, okay, where is my food? What What is happening to my food? Is the guy lost? Something like that. So that is where the entire concept of tracking the scooter, the delivery boy also came in. Earlier, Swiggy introduced it, then Zomato, then Blinkit, then every other uh, you know company did it. So that is where the user interface and user experience blends with design thinking and comes out as a product. Uh, tourism, if you think, if you look again, look at the photo. So there is a place called Lego World. This photo that I've put as uh, is uh, the Disney World in I think Russia right now. Yeah, that is. Uh, I don't think this is the Russia one. This is the US one. I guess this one is from Paris. This one's for Paris. I'm not sure. I've not been to any Disneyland as such. But uh, yeah, one of one of those places. So what have they done is people, are, there are kids, kids get fascinated and they have to promote that. So then they make everything that themed, okay, which is promoting tourism to that specific place. It's not just Disneyland or any other fancy land. It's happening with all sorts of tourism places where they are actually understanding what is this user coming for. Now, uh, while watching IPL or while watching uh, World Cup, uh, you might have seen that there were a lot of Dubai ads. So they, they're also in the marketing bit, they applied some sense that if a person is coming to an entirely different country, they want to experience everything, right? Now, if an Indian goes to US, uh, to, to, to Dubai, then of course there are mountains, there are beaches, there are uh, plateaus, there are green, there is greenery, there is desert everywhere, but it's pretty scattered. Okay. But if you look at the size of UAE or you look at, look at the size of Dubai, then it's all compact in one place, maybe a day's travel at best. Right. So that is what they introduced. That is what they, you know, thought of as the end user requirement. And that is what they're going to promote in the ads to tell them that this is something that we're going to use, that this is something that we're going to provide to you. And this is the exact reason why you should come because we have basically everything. You just come. Okay. So that is how design thinking is being applied in tourism also. Now, the last bit is our favorite bit. Everybody is a part of it for some reason uh, is the IIT Madras BS degree. What is the empathy that we have applied here? Uh, there is, um, you know, there are people who are uh, in remote locations, 
all of us are joining in from lo remote locations, but we still want an IT tag. We still want the education on data science and programming, and in some cases, ES here in this call. So uh, how do we enable that? We make an online program for everybody to be accessible uh, and make it accessible to everybody. So that is where education bit is coming in. A lot of other examples also. And uh, political design. I'm not going to comment on this, sorry. OK. <laughs> OK. Uh, next up, uh, yeah, I told you about marketing. Here, marketing, of course, there is Dove, which is using you know users as themselves to show that there are different variants of you know human skin and how Dove as a product helps out. Uh, automobiles, there, of course, is Tesla you know helping everybody out. Uh, there are designs that are coming into places. If you see this button, people used to lose keys or get keys stolen or somebody else used to just jack their car. Uh, how, what, how do they you know con contradict that? They come up with a, a, a fingerprint an, an analysis. And if you touch your thumb, that is when this uh, car starts. So there is no point of you know keeping track of your uh, wallet, keeping track of your key, all of that. So um, things like that are also you know a, a result of design thinking. Artificial intelligence being my absolute favorite in this list. Um, so one anecdote I would like to give you: when I was in college, not too many years ago, uh, we did not have the concept of Chat GPT. Okay. And uh, this is, I think, 2020, we're talking about 2020, we had no chat GPT. We had Google. Google was good enough for us. Google was God for us. But two years later, I see chat GPT is coming, and it is basically doing all of my work. OK, anything that I need to know, it's there. So similar to iPhone, what chat GPT has done is it's made me realize that this is something that I actually needed without me having, having described it as a problem to myself. Right? I. Till the time I saw that a chat box is giving me an entire presentation's content, I was Googling different bits and pieces, going to different websites, sorting stuff out, eliminating things. You know, it's it's basically created a need. Yes, exactly, Lavanya. So that is something that you know, as technologists, as developers, people came together. People realized that this is something that is a problem that needs a solution, and they came up with AI and then Gen AI, basically. So uh, as I've been told to use more of AI in this bit, so there are more AI related things here. So uh, Spotify is, is using user data to give you playlist. Uh, Netflix is uh, uh, really understanding your watching patterns and then suggesting you more things to watch. Uh, I, AI idea power, power uh, ideation is something that uh, is also happening because uh, something that we just did in the Ed Sheeran example, right? Give me a list of problems that Ed Sheeran might have. So what AI did was just ideated it for me, gave me an entire list, and I didn't have to really think. Predictive healthcare, I've put an Apple Watch here because I have a really good example in my head, is that somebody, uh, some 36-year-old guy was wearing an Apple Watch, and Apple uh, told him that, you know, there's something wrong with your heart because that is not your general heartbeat that is going on. So. Uh, that is another place where uh, uh, predictive AI is coming into place and you know helping people save life, uh, save lives. And then automobile advancement, there is an entire f constant flow going to the car's CPU to make them understand what next step should you drive at, how you should drive, things like that. So there is a lot of predictive AI. There is a lot of you know uh, data related. Uh, empathy that is going on within the cars, it's cars themselves, and giving you an immediate outcome or solution uh, while you drive. So yeah, mathematics supernova says, and I'll say it again, DT can be applied in pretty much all fields. Uh, what you need to do is sit down, understand what the problem is, empathize with the solution, empathize with the customer and customer, and you know uh, you can you can do your thing then. Uh, look up more into design thinking. There is a lot more to to it. Uh, this is what I've done so far in in the past hour is to introduce you to the concept of DT and uh, how you can possibly apply it or how you can approach it. There is uh, uh, an acronym that I would like to a mnemonic that I would like to give to you. That is E A S T East. Empathize, analyze, solve, test, understand, drill down on the problem, create solutions, 
test those solutions. So EAST, that is what design thinking is. Okay. So that was it, I think, from me. Okay. Uh, the future of AI, of course, there is a lot that you can do. I think I've covered a lot of it already. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That is my time. That is my session. Okay. Uh, for the people who wanted to connect with me, my name is Sukrat Dang on LinkedIn. And if you want to give me a job, that is Sukrat Dang at gmail.com. Or if you want to get stuff done out of me, then you write to me on Sukrat at study.itm. Okay. So these are the three places where you can connect with me. If you have any other questions, comments, doubts, please ask right away. Too too much echo. What? Yeah, there is a doubt from uh, Suponova again. Uh, mm -hmm. If the problem is an urgent emergency and the solution is not instant and quick, how yeah. has the humanity? Uh, how can we deal with it, basically? If the problem is urgent and let me read it. Can I read it somewhere? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's in the got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Uh, I want to know huh? if the problem is an urgent emergency and the solution is not an instant and quick, how as the humanity we can deal with, uh, say Corona in this example, if you're, if you're bringing in the entire humanity, I would say Corona as an, as an example here. So it was an emergency. We shut down everything and uh, we, uh, you know, understood what the problem was. Of course, it took a lot of time, but to uh, to deal with such situations, we don't bring up a solution right away. We uh, be, uh, we uh, implement things that will stop the spread of the problem, or we try to counter the problem, and then in the meantime, we buy time and we work on that solution. Similar, like I'll I'll continue with the Corona example. What happened exactly? We realized that it is a problem. We declared it as an emergency, a global emergency, stopped people from traveling everywhere. And then a uh, lot of teams, a lot of movies also may based on that now. Uh, they sat down, they understood what the problem is. They uh, did a lot of iterations, to human testing, things like that, and then released the vaccine. So when there is no time, you buy time, basically that. Uh, what is your POV on will AI took all the jobs. No, I don't think AI will take all the jobs. Somebody has to write something. As per reports, Batman is watching the session. Why, Utkarsh? Uh, what is going on in the comments, man? <laughs> OK. Uh, so how do you make such PPTs? Uh, please explain. How do I make such PPTs? I have experience, man. I've been making PPTs for the past four years now, so it comes. Uh, not gonna lie, sir, but this PPT was so appealing to us. Uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, I mean, so this is a template that I've used from uh, a site that I can give you. It's called Slides Go. Uh, you can search that up, and you'll have uh, other things. By applying DT in the pandemic, the central government encouraged people by Doordarshan programs, eliminating panic, delivered speeches, etc. Until when correct, yeah. Uh, where can we find recording of the session? I'm not sure. Gravity and Apple is coming. Uh, Slidesgo.com. Yeah, sorted. So, guys, I'll see you. Uh, if there is anything, please write to me. If you want to ask anything right now, you may. And if not, I can uh, say bye bye. So, Thank you, sir. Lord. Thank you, sir, for this yeah. amazing session. And you just opened my eyes. Like, I can use this thing in hackathons and everything. Pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. Yes. yes. All right. So thank you, uh, Aditya, and uh, one other person, Arnold. Yes, for uh, it. Just, uh, I just like to add one thing, uh, if you yeah. don't mind. Uh, I've been uh, throughout the session. I've been thinking about the things that you told about, uh, you know, uh, design thinking and how the designs evolve uh, from uh, repeated uses. So I would also like to show you something that I designed myself. Uh, okay. It is based on something that I uh, see that was a problem to me as in, uh, and I designed this this thing. It's a wallet basically. Let me uh, pin your yeah, thing. I, so it's this is a wallet. A tera, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a wallet okay. that I designed uh, so that I can just flick it open with my hand, just one of my hands, and all of my credit cards and cards can just pop out. So I will have easy access to everything. Nice. So this really saves time as in if I'm getting off a, 
a bus or a cab. I don't have to shuffle through my wallet, opening and finding all my cards. I can just, just take, it open, take it out and just tap it anywhere on the go. Did, did, did you did you have a lot of um, uh, different iterations to it while making it, or what uh, yes, products I are have, you using for it? I've had multiple iterations throughout. Okay. My table is just filled with that. Okay. So the, the, this is actually three D printed. I'm a three D designer myself, and I three D okay. printed it at home. So uh, the thing that I went through is see, I needed it to be slim so that it fits in my pocket. And the main purpose was to save time. So yeah, basically that's all. Okay. That's that's pretty cool, man. If you want to share this thing as I mean, I understand that this is already a product. I think some company is giving. I think it's a flick of a thing, and all of the cards come up vertically, but they don't pop out. Is what I've seen. So, yeah, yeah, there are uh, multiple variants of this product. I mean, uh, many companies are doing it as an attachment for your phone, so that. Uh, the cards are accessible from the back of your phone yeah so yeah this yeah this is really something i look for okay 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 cool i mean i would like to see more uh, i mean you know the the way you've made it I, if you want any help with it let me know yes sir definitely sir. really nice i mean i i'm honestly i'm very fascinated by 3d printing i want a 3d printer for myself also but it's a it's a big undertaking so i'm giving it some time yeah Anyway, uh, so, cool. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, Aditya, also, I have one uh, question: Is this yes, uh, the thing behind you? Is it a spy hawk? What is it? It's a sky surfer, sir. Sky surfer, okay. okay. So I just uh, fly it in, on the weekends when okay. I get some free time. Nice. Nice. Cool. Anyway, see you guys. Uh, I will uh, see you if you text me or uh, you know send a connection request. Or if you want to write to me, just give me some context because uh, I get a lot of mails. Okay. Uh, anyway, see you guys. Uh, thank you so much for bearing through me and disgust you, you guys with ketchup. But that's my style. Okay. okay. <laughs> thank, thank you. Time. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, thank you for your okay. time. Uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, thank you for the entire. Okay. Audience. I'm hoping to meet you in Paradox. I might not yeah. be there, but I'll see you. So, I'll see you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah,